This is the 2022 Audi A4. I really think that for Americans, with the possible exception of the R8, the A4 here defines the brand. The question is, is it any good? The answer, keep watching. This generation of A4, internally known as the B9 A4, has been around a long time. I first drove it in the fall of 2015 on the launch in Venice, Italy. And then I first drove it in the US in the fall of 2016 as a 2017 model. And I guess I liked it a lot because I went ahead and leased one in 2017 for a couple years. Problem though is now it's the middle of 2022. And while this has been refreshed, its major competition is brand new. The BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, Tesla launched the Model 3, Alfa Romeo came out with the Giulia, and Genesis launched the G70. Who's buying these things? Well, you know, young, upwardly mobile, urban professionals, yuppies. And does that make me a yuppie? No, I'm much too old. Audi has been killing it design-wise for almost two decades. We saw the change when they debuted the Le Mans concept car. It had a huge grill. Well, what does a huge grill mean? It means that even though this isn't an EV yet, it will be one day, that whatever motor is under that hood, it needs a lot of air. You gotta cool it, it's gotta breathe. You know, that's what this is saying. Plus, you've got this nice little vent right here. It's a, it's a cool throwback to the old Sport Quattro. More breathing, I need more air. That's kind of what these do right here as well. Also, Audi is super proud of the fact that they were the first out of the gate to use LED daytime running lights. So you can see them right here. They really wonderfully kind of frame the headlights. It's like angry eyebrows, looks great. Good looking front end. You start coming down the side of the car, and you just marvel at how this company is able to bend metal. Their line work is incredible. And I've seen CEOs from other car companies at auto shows, they get up close and they're just looking at the tiny little radii, you know, that Audi is able to employ on, you know, a fairly standard car like this. It is pretty impressive. Keep coming down the side, great looking sill, great greenhouse. You know, this car has a relatively long wheelbase. It always looks like, makes the car look more elegant. It's just really nicely done. You get out back, four rings, quattro, two tailpipes, great tail lights. Looks like an Audi, it looks sporty. And the amazing thing is, you know, we have seen this generation A4 for nearly eight years now. It still looks good, it still looks sexy, it still looks fresh. That is good design. While Audi did a nice job refreshing the exterior of the car, they did a less than nice job refreshing the A4's interior. That said, this one's pretty good. There are some nice materials and also some not so nice materials. I'll give you a couple examples. One is, look at this cool aluminum trim here and going across the dash. That's very nice. However, on top of the dash, in fact, all the upper surfaces in the car, it's this kind of greasy, glossy looking rubber. So it'd be nice if that was covered in leather. It's not, we're all gonna live long, happy lives. The seats though, they're covered in nice leather and they're pretty comfortable. And the technology, while older, is still really good. Audi has their virtual cockpit. Nobody has figured out really anything better yet. And the screen is both bigger and it covers up a lot of that greasy rubber so you don't have to look at it. Screen works really well. It's legible. It's got all kinds of cool technology built in. Like if you sort of put your finger right on that, you see it lights up before you click it. That's pretty cool. Every, everything's really nice. And Audi, what they do, which I still love, and I don't know why all these years later, it still gets me excited, but you know, haptically, the sounds that everything makes are identical. So if I push the uh, button to uh, shift gears, it makes the same sound as the uh, little lever that turns on the parking brake. And everything kind of has the same click and sound to it. It's just nice. Really spacious for a car in this segment. And the back seat is much bigger than most of the competition. Has a pretty good trunk as a result as well. So again, just to summarize, the interior was much more exciting back in 2016 when it came out. It's still pretty good today. As far as performance goes, the Audi A4, it's okay. It's not great, it's not bad, it's just sort of somewhere in the middle. Under the hood, you're gonna find a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine that got a little tiny power bump during the mid-cycle refresh. So now it makes 
261 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. All of that goes through a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, and of course, it hits all four wheels. That's what Quattro means. It has the ingredients to be very quick in a straight line, and it's pretty quick. Even though it weighs nearly 3,700 pounds, it'll hit 60 miles an hour in 5.4 seconds. As far as handling goes, the engine is really far forward in these cars. They do it for packaging reasons to give you more interior volume, but as a result, it's nose heavy, and when you really start to push the car, it begins to push. That's known as understeer, where it's just kind of going this way, even though you're telling the car that you want to go that way. Do the people who buy this car push it to the limit? Probably not, so it's really not a big deal. It does have rather nice ride quality, even on relatively big wheels and tires. When it comes to fuel economy, it's also okay. It gets 24 miles per gallon in the city and 31 miles per gallon on the highway. As far as safety goes, it's sort of a mixed bag, hear me out. So as far as the crash structure goes, it's great. This thing gets a five-star rating from the feds. That's awesome. But the Insurance Institute only gives it a top safety pick for 2022 if you spend a little more money. And this is a very German thing where some automatic safety features are only included in more expensive versions of the car. This one happens to be an S-Line, so you'll get more safety features than you would if you just bought a lower priced A4. We don't like that. Just make cars as safe as you can every single time. You can get into a 2022 Audi A4 for as little as just under $41,000. And if you want one that's equipped like this red guy sitting right here, this is a S-Line Prestige, it's over $55,000, but that's pretty typical for this segment. But what about the competition? Well. The Audi is more expensive than the Genesis by about $3,000. It is a little bit less than the BMW, than the Mercedes and the Alfa Romeo, and it's about $7,000 less than a dual motor Tesla Model 3. So within this segment, you can say that the A4 is something of a good value, especially if you take it easy with the options. If there's one thing that I want you to know about the 2022, Audi A4 is that all these years later, this is still fundamentally a good car and the refinements they've made have only made it that much better. It's still really good looking. The interior is still great. Performance is pretty good. Fuel economy is okay. And the price is actually competitive. If I didn't have my Alfa Romeo Giulia right now and I had to go and buy a sports sedan, would I consider the Audi A4? That's sort of the ultimate question. And the answer is, yeah, I would be very happy owning this car. The problem with it is I'd rather have the Alfa Romeo Giulia. To see vehicle rankings and a complete buyer's guide, please visit motortrend.com cars.